I just want to mention, though, HS2, which we learned today, could be forced to run fewer trains and at slower speeds in order to keep within the budget, according to its uh, chief executive. Let's talk to Joe Rukin, who's uh, the campaign manager for Stop HS2. Hello, Joe. Evening, Clive. What's your reaction to this latest development, then? Well, in some ways, we've been waiting for this for, uh, like, nine years, because... HS2 has proposed 18 trains an hour. It's always meant to have been 18 trains an hour. Only one pop problem at the speed that they're proposing is impossible. Relies on technology that has not been invented. The French do about do 14. They've said, mm, there's a theoretical maximum of 15. We've been saying 18. And part of the reason for that has been because... You know, uh, Patrick McLaughlin and Chris Grayling and all these different Secretary of State have gone off to all these cities and said, oh, you'll have high-speed rail, and that has relied on having 18 trains an hour. And now he's saying, oh, well, you know, we're going to have to cut them to the number that we said they'd be in the first place. <coughs> Sorry, the number from the number we said in the first place to a number that is actually possible. Mm-hmm. And all of these places that have been lobbying for it, you know, councillors, business leaders, MPs have been saying, oh yeah, you'll get high-speed rail. They They have now been lied to. And they've been lied to because we've always known this. We've always known 18 trains an hour was not possible, could not be done. And they've been lying about it for almost a decade. But the thing is, as we're seeing, cost needs to be cut. And they are absolutely panicking because we've seen that uh, the contractors have come back now that the ground surveys are finally done and guess what what we've been telling them about the ground conditions for the last <laughs> say eight nine years you know the people who live here said yeah that's sandstone that's clay that's chalk there, there's you know this is a salt mining area that's prone to subsidence or or a mining area a uh, coal mining area that's prone to subsidence. And we said, we've been saying this for years, and finally they realise, oh, God, it's going to cost more than we thought. And everything, all of a sudden, is going to cost mm. more than they thought. They're talking about changing routes. They're talking about doing this. They are talking Do you think that anything. would defeat the whole well, object, c- then? I mean, oh, if, if we had fewer trains and they're going slower, uh, yeah. I mean, it seems to take the, 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 the rug from beneath, doesn't it? Well, the entire business... Right, basically, HS2 only got passed because it passed the the benefit-cost ratio test. Because it had... You know, it was meant to deliver more money than it cost to build the thing. Uh, But the thing is, the entire business case was based on the time-saving. You could put a cash value on the fact that you're going faster because, according to the Department of Transport, no one ever works on trains. So if you've ever seen someone tapping away on a laptop on a train, you're wrong. Doesn't happen. The entire business case for HS2 totally falls apart if people work on trains. But they said this. They said, you know, we'll we'll have these cash savings because of the speed of HS2. And now that falls apart. Mm. The fact that you're going from 18 trains an hour to 14 trains an hour, that falls apart. And you've had other things, like, for example, every service pattern that's been proposed so far has said, you know, the train's going up the east side of the country, they'll go Nottingham, Sheffield, Leeds. Well, now, because they found out, guess what, the ground conditions around Sheffield can't stand the trains where they were going to put them, you're going to have trains that go to Sheffield, but then don't go on to leave. Yeah. So, just just a quick question as well, Joe. Do you think that we are now looking at the possibility of it being scrapped, that the, the mood is moving that way? We are absolutely looking at Endgame now, because... The fact of the matter is you've seen this colossal mess with Crossrail, where it is patently clear that they knew that it was late. They knew that it was billions over budget, and they have kept it quiet as long as they could. They have lied, and they have lied about the cost being over and about it being not on time. You know, you say, oh, it's on time. No, right, it's meant to be open by now. They they basically lied about those things right until the, up until the last moment where it was impossible to lie anymore. And someone has finally said, hang on, are they doing this with HS2 as well? And yes... This is happening with HS2, but HS2 is at a much earlier stage. You know, they are desperate to pretend that it can't be stopped. They're saying, oh, we started building it. No, you've not. You've started knocking things down. You started the archaeology. 
you have not started building it. And they are pretending that they started constructing HS2. So they can say, oh, no, you can't cancel it now. It's no. too late. It's well, they certainly started spending the money, but they, they haven't started actually building. Joe, really interesting to talk to you. We will see whether HS2 ever actually happens. I do detect the mood is slightly shifting away from that now.